Hi and welcome to another video by Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs. I'm Stuart Smith and on the bench today we have an orange CR120. Now don't get excited if you don't know this amp, it's a solid state amp, not a valve amp. It's got 200 watt power chips inside it. The problem that the customer says with this amp is that it works fine when you turn it on, but then after a short while there's no sound whatsoever. Now I have actually turned this amp on and lo and behold it did exactly as he said. I turned it on, it was fine, I was playing around with it, I went and made myself a cup of tea, I came back and it was completely soundless. The lights were all on, power was still working, but absolutely nothing. So this will either be something fairly straightforward or it could be a bit of a pig to repair. At the moment I've got no idea how this amp will go. When you're repairing an amp, you should have a theory in mind, and I've got one or two ideas. It could be a power supply problem, so basically the power supply to some chips inside is just disappearing. That would do it. Uh, I haven't checked if it's got an FX send and return jack on the back. That will be my first port of call. But let's just see if I can get it to perform for you. It's only done it once, and by the way, that was a few days ago. I've only just got around to doing the video. So we'll turn it on now, see if it works, and then see if we can get it to die. Okay, well here we go, let's just turn it on, and it uh, doesn't matter whether it's clean or dirty, it doesn't take any time to warm up. And there we go, that's working perfectly okay. Sounds fine. Nice reverb on this, all, uh, all um, solid state of course. The other thing I did was to give it a bash around on top to see if it was any kind of loose connection or loose component situation. Nothing solid as a rock. Uh, in fact, we can do that now. You can, you can be fairly rough with an amp, it's not going to damage it. And that is absolutely absolutely solid. Um, I'll just have a look on the back. Okay, there is an effect send and return jack. So I'm going to leave this now for five minutes. I'll turn the camera off. Then I'll come back. If the sound's gone, the first thing I'm going to do is to take a short jack lead, jack to jack, and jack out the effect send and return. If the sound suddenly comes back, we know exactly what the problem is it will be dirty contacts on the jack sockets and that will eliminate that. So I'll turn the camera off now, go and have another cup of tea, I am English after all, and I've only had 114 cups today and then I'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll see if it's alive or dead. 10 minutes later, still waiting. <sighs> Twenty minutes later, I'm going up to the post office to post this. Nothing yet, it's still working fine. Typical this. Oh well, we'll see if it's doing anything when I come back in about half an hour. Okay, well that's the answer. You have to go to the post office and uh, the amp stops working. So I'll remember that little tip for the future. And the amp, about, where are we now, like 25 minutes since I last spoke to you, completely dead. Just strum the guitar, nothing whatsoever coming through. As you can see, the lights are on, so it's not a, not a mains power issue. So I'm just going to eliminate something, to be honest with you. I don't think it'll be this, because normally banging the top would cause the sound to come and go, if it was the effects send and return jack. So I've just got a little jack-to-jack -jack lead here. I'm literally going to plug it into the effects send and the effects return, just literally um, shorting those two out and eliminating dirty contacts on that. So let's just do that. Effects send, effects return. Strum the guitar, nothing. I, I sort of didn't think that would work. Um, what else can we do? We can plug the guitar straight into the effects return. Of course it will be a lot lower level. But you should hear something 
if the power amp section is working. So we'll just we'll just try that. We're going into effects return strum absolutely nothing it's silent as the grave here I'm just going to stick my ear to the speaker which is below the bench to see if I can hear anything at all coming out of this amp Whoa, that could almost be disconnected. There's not the slightest hiss, the slightest hum. No indication of any signal coming out. Okay, well, let's give it another bash just in case. I'm not thinking this is a mechanical loose connection, loose component issue here. It's a bit of a mystery, this one, so I'm fresh out of ideas. The next thing to do is to take the chassis out and see if we can see anything inside or maybe have a little measure around with some voltages. Of course, the tricky thing here is what I, what I don't want to do, what, I, what I'm going to have to, I think, is to power the amp down, and take the chassis out, power it back up again, and of course it will, it will work straight away. In fact, I've just had a little thought. Why don't we just turn it off and then turn it straight on and see if it springs to life? that would indicate that it wasn't some sort of heating problem. You know, this might be something that gets warmer and warmer and warmer and then a dry joint opens up or something. So if I turn the amp off and turn it on again, it's still just as warm, it should still be faulty. So let's give that a go. So strum the guitar, nothing, power off, power on, still nothing. So it may be something getting warm, hot, and just opening up a little dry joint or something. Um, okay, next thing then is to take the amp out on the chassis, see if we can get it to misbehave out of the box. Okay, that came out absolutely no problem whatsoever. Four bolts and it pulls out. I wish that all chassis were as simple to remove. I turned it on and it's all sprung back to life, of course. I only spent about two minutes taking the chassis out, so back in a working condition which which means this is not going to be particularly easy to fix so here's the inside for you uh, all the heavy lifting is done by these two power chips here that's a rectifier diode bridge rectifier there and two I think the 100 watts I haven't checked the part number 100 watt uh, chips there on the great big heatsink and of course the rest is just op amps doing all the all the amplification. Right, so what we can do, I think I think with this one, what we'll do is we'll put a tone through it so that we've got a continuous noise and then we can start having a little waggle around. Although, as I said earlier, I'm not getting the feeling of a, of a loose connection, dry joint sort of thing here. All right, so let's put a tone through it and see what happens. There we go, I've just put a low level tone, no point in deafening ourselves uh, a couple of 300 hertz or whatever and you can probably hear that chuntering away in the background and now that just saves us having to endlessly strum the guitar and now what we can do is start to have a little kind of waggle around although as I say I'm not hopeful here so usual suspects are things like you know, these interboard connectors so let's see if we can get the sound to disappear some more connectors here. These are power. Seem to be okay. Another one here. It's all right. What else we've got? We've got this interboard connector here. They're always a problem. These interboard. Oh! Did you hear that? I just said they're always a problem. These and I touch this and. Here's the problem already. Now which end it is, I don't know. Oh, that end. The slightest touch on there. Wow. Oh yeah, absolutely amazing. So uh, I think we've got a fix on this. We've got this one here as well, of course. See, when you think about it, look, 
Marshall are very bad at this. When you think about it, look how much there is to go wrong when you start interconnecting PCBs like this with these things. So each of these connectors, you've got two connectors to worry about. You've got the male and the female. So let's go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 2, 4, 6, 8, 50, 2, 4, 6, 8, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, I may have 70, 72, 4, 6, 8, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. There are 90 socket components on this amplifier. 90. On some of the Marshalls, the DSL and TSLs, you're talking a couple of hundred. You only need one of those, and don't forget, they're only little titchy fifth of a penny pieces of metal touching each other. You only need one of those to be slightly sprung, to be corroded or whatever, and you're getting exactly what we're getting here when we touch this cable here. Sound comes and goes. Well, I'm quite pleased because what I will now do is I will, re will remove this little joining ribbon here and spray some deoxid on it and put it back together and I bet you anything you like that that fixes it. Um, shall I bother showing you that? Uh, do you know what? I think I will. I get a lot of emails and texts from people saying please, 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 please show us the detail. We don't want you to just jump forward to where you fixed it. So, I think, you know, I don't know who's watching these videos. I suspect it's a combination of um, people who want to be amp techs or, or who are amp techs and people who have this exact amplifier and want to know how to fix this exact problem. I think that's probably who my audience are. So anyway, let's get the camera set up on the overhead and I'll show you exactly how I do this. Right, here we are on the overhead and uh, just to prove we've still got the problem I will... Do you know what? I don't... That's interesting. I'm looking at this and I do not like the look of this extreme left-hand pin here. It almost looks like it's pushed out of the out of the socket. I wonder, I'm just going to touch that one, see if that could possibly be the culprit. Well, it's certainly right there. Um, you may not be able to see on, let me see, I'll just zoom in a little bit more, see if you're able to see that. If you hold on a sec, I'll just move the... Oh, there we go. Okay, great, you can see that, good. I'm pleased, because this is educational. Right, there we go. <coughs> Sorry about the bounce. Right, now can you see that, you know, these... Ooh, God, it's so sensitive there. These connectors here, the black... Oh, it's gone, look. The black, two blacks and the red or whatever. The pins are firmly into the socket. And can you see that this white one here, the pin is kind of, you know, sticking out. It's almost like the the connections pushed the pin out and that does seem to be the sensitive one I hardly have to I'm putting the most light pressure on that single wire there so my bet is well let's turn it off now just unplug the mains I'll just zoom out a bit now it's a little bit more sensible view there we go no need to worry about high voltage on this amp, there aren't any, and I've unplugged the mains and there's no high volt capacitors or anything on this. So I'm just going to disconnect this here, which means giving it a fairly sharp pull and it just comes out like that, look. And similarly this end, avoiding that, that pin there. Right, and there's our, our culprit connector. And, well, let me show you. See if I can get this for you. Can you see how that white connection there is sticking out of the thing? And you can actually even see here that it's not pushed home. So that, the, these these are little, oh, I say, tenth of a penny pieces of metal. The first thing I'm going to do is see if I can push this home and get it to click in. In which case that might be job done. So let's just do that. 
I've uh, put together thousands of these in my time in the electronics industry. Yeah, well, that seemed to go home. That seemed to go home quite well. Um, so I'm still going to deoxid this. So, and let's do that now. Spray it down the holes, then spread onto the connectors there. Now we can push this home here. That goes in nicely. I'm going to push it, this one home, holding on to this white lead quite tightly with my thumb and finger just to stop it popping out again in case it is tempted to. Right, that looks good. So now my bet is when I turn this on that'll work and waggling this around won't have any effect whatsoever. That's the goal. Okay, we've got a nice signal. Waggle, waggle, waggle. Look at that. Completely fixed. Oh, well. That's awesome. We could have been hours on this. Quite literally, it could have been anything. Could have been, you know, dry joint on these capacitors here. Something wrong with the power supply. Requiring us to take all this lot out and look at dry joints and all that kind of thing. So, this is a real result. Just turn that. Put the guitar in. Not that we need to. And go have a little strum and uh, job done okay so we'll put this back together and we can consider that done very lucky there there we go the amp went back together very quickly and easily just for screws for bolts I wanted to just show you since we've got a bit of time on this a quick case cleaning tip for orange amplifiers again I'm not sure how much you can see here but this is it's not filthy but it's fairly dirty and the dirt is very ingrained and if you spray something on there and wipe it off it doesn't get into the grain here so here's a little trick that I use I, you've probably seen me plug this before it's uh, Meguiar's convertible top cleaner I'm not on any kind of commission I pay full price for it just like you do um, I don't do any sponsorship or advertising at all on the channel actually so if I recommend something it's because I think it's good I don't get a penny for it so we spray a little bit we'll just do a little bit on here so that we can we can compare one area with another and then I just take a an old toothbrush and I work it around don't spend too long doing it just kind of circular motion around here we'll stay within the black lines then we'll just just do this little section here only takes a couple of minutes back and forwards round and round a bit I'm doing it with my left hand so it looks a bit messed up there we go and then just get some uh, kitchen towel or whatever and wipe all the excess stuff off and you can already see what a dramatic difference that has made in just a couple of, you know, like 30 seconds between here and here. It's, uh, yeah, obviously I've missed a little bit there just because I didn't do the toothbrush very thoroughly. So that's, you know, that works really, really well, that. And so I'm just going to go over the whole top of this amplifier. It only takes me about five minutes. I don't get paid for it, um, five or ten minutes, but it's just so nice to send an amplifier back to the customer looking not quite showroom but looking a lot nicer than when they brought it to me so i'll do that quickly and show you the results in fact tell you what i'm going to time it exactly how long it takes me to completely do this top so let's see it's now let's say uh, five to four it is so i'll rejoin you when i've done it well i'm a bit surprised that only took 10 minutes it's five past four i thought it might take 20 but as you can see, this top is looking very nice now. No comparison to how it was. And another little tip before I put the chassis back, I did along here. It's a bit more awkward, awkward to get to when the chassis is in, so do it when the chassis is out. Do along there, and there, it, there you go. That looks a whole lot better. Right, so that's a wrap. Um, very annoying in some ways. Orange... I've been making amplifiers for a long, long time. 
every electronic engineer knows the problem with those little cheap interboard connectors yet Orange decided let's put them in anyway even though we know they go faulty I really don't understand it sometimes it must just be cost and who cares about longevity anyway it mustn't get into moaning mode uh, I'll call this a wrap for the moment and yeah I'll say my goodbyes well I hope you enjoyed that one I certainly did I I'm not in in the business of running up huge bills for the customer to be honest with you this is a kind of paid hobby rather than a full-time business I'm mostly retired these days so the quicker the fix I can get the happier I am I don't have to spend hours in the workshop the customer isn't faced with a hundred two hundred pound bill and everybody's happy so there we go quite a common fault with amps particular transistor ones where they have those interboard connectors always have a little gentle waggle if it's a sound coming sound going problem on this one I'm a little bit surprised that bouncing the amp around didn't cause that to fail because as you saw the slightest touch on that connector caused it to come and go yet we bounced the sound nicely and it didn't make any difference and also what caused it to fail after five minutes it must have just been something heating up slightly just enough to open that connection no idea Anyway, that was 100% 100% what the fault was, and we've got a fix. Thank you for watching. I'm on to my next amplifier. Oh, hang on, it's, it's quarter past four. It's time for tea and cake. I'll catch you on the next video.